I think it's a terrible idea to charge per hour. And we never addressed this, right? I always talk about pricing and yada, yada, but like, I think it's a terrible idea to charge per hour as a wedding DJ. And I'll tell you why. So charging per hour, first of all, is a terrible represented, like terrible representation of what you do. Because if you're charging per hour, you charge $100 per hour, like that guy said, okay? You do a four-hour wedding reception, four hours, 400 bucks. You are now not getting paid for all the behind-the-scenes work. Depending on like your whole workflow and everything, you know, the behind-the-scenes stuff, the planning, the meetings, everything can be half, maybe 75% of the time you spend on a wedding. I'm about half and half, I'd say. You know, I probably spend about four hours, five hours per wedding behind the scenes, planning, making my playlist, prepping stuff, my worksheets, meetings with the couple, right? Sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more, but on average, it's probably 50-50 for me. Some other people might take even a little longer. You're not getting paid for any of that stuff. You're only getting paid for the actual event. So you're doing yourself a disservice. On top of that, charging per hour kind of opens up a can of worms. When you charge per hour, you're inviting clients to nickel and dime you, you know? I hate nickel and honestly, nickel and dime is such a terrible for, you know, nowadays. You we we're gonna change. We'll do. It, it should be. You, you're you're inviting clients to ten dollar, twenty dollar you. <laughs> it's, maybe if it was like a year or two ago, you could still say nickel and dime. I feel like nickel and dime is an outdated you know statement. Okay, it's a ten it's a ten twenty dollar. Okay, it's a it's a Hamilton Jackson you. Clients will Hamilton Jackson you, right? Anyway, regardless, you're opening up a can of worms with this. Because what could happen is clients could, you know, if, if you're charging per hour, now, let's say further down the, the line, you know, they want to add their ice sculpture <laughs> to the wedding, right? Or they want to add something and they need to cut uh, costs somewhere. Well, they're going to look at the DJ cost and say, might say, hey, you know what? Honestly, um, dinner's until like 8.30, we don't need you to start till 8.30. So can we just have you from like 8.30 to 10.30 just for the two-hour dance set? We'll just put on a playlist in the background of dinner or vice versa. You know, we don't need you the whole time. You can actually leave an hour early. We're staying for like an after party and all that and we're going to still be in the room, but you can just pack up and leave. We don't need you for the whole time. You're opening yourself up for clients to literally ask you to cut, you know, just come late. Don't start till late. And those of you that agree to that sort of thing, now you're stuck in a crossroads. Either you show up late and set up with enough time to start right after dinner. So literally you look late. The entire, all 150 people at the wedding are looking at you like you're late. Like this dude's late. Like why is he setting up now? Like the wedding, we've been here. Like the dude's late. Wow, the DJ was late. And they don't, because they don't understand what happened. Or you get there early, like normal. And then you got to go fart around for three, four hours until you're ready to go. So you're still wasting, you know, the whole day, you're still there. You still set up early. It's just, you just didn't mix through dinner. So you're making less money, but you're still there the same amount of time. Charging per hour sets you up for this type of thing. You got to charge per event. It's just a terrible idea. Literally a terrible idea. See, you got to have a minimum. Because if you have a minimum, you can have more of a stable income. Your, 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 your income's unstable when you charge per hour, because some weddings might be three hours, some weddings might be four hours, some weddings might nickel and, or, or Jackson and, ha or no, Hamilton and Jackson you, <laughs> and only need two hours. Some might be five, six hours, right? You wanna have a minimum. As a talented professional, you have to have a minimum rate. This is how much you, you charge when you DJ a wedding, minimum. Now that minimum weight rate should be based on, you know, your talent, your area, where where you're from, what people are charging in your area. If you believe you're kind of like in the middle, right? You're talented than some more talented than some DJs, you have better service than some DJs, but there are some DJs that, you know, are are, you know, offer a little better service or might have more experience or whatever, and you're in the middle, then price yourself in the middle. Do the old, you know, bride2024 at gmail.com and email everybody, get everybody's prices, right? Everybody has a burner account. Figure out what everybody's charging in your area. Price yourself in the middle. If you're just starting out, maybe price yourself more on the lower end as you're starting out and getting gaining your experience. And if you consider yourself one of the top professionals in your area, if you are the shit, right? If you crush every single wedding, if you look at your competition and they're copying what you do, then you better be the highest priced in your market.
But regardless, do your research and set that minimum based on the market, where you live, and your talent level. And don't leave your house for anything less than that. You will get it. And now you can better kind of judge what you're going to make for the year, you know? And build in all those extra costs. Remember how much everything else costs and gas and all that stuff. Set yourself up. You don't want to do all this work for weddings, you know? Sweat over the hot mixer every weekend and make no money at the end of the year. A lot of you still have full-time jobs while you're DJing because you're priced like this, because you still charge per hour. And it breaks my heart. If you really love to DJ and you want to do this for a living, this is your ticket. Stop charging per hour. Charge a minimum. You're going to book the same amount of shows. And even if you don't, even if you book a little bit less, you're still making more on average. And then you still have that minimum price. So you could say, okay, if I have 60 weddings, 70 weddings this year at this minimum, at the minimum, now you can kind of calculate where you're going to make everything and you can see if it makes sense to make the jump and go full time. I don't know. I just, I don't see a situation in any asset. Like, I don't care where you live, where you're from, what your competition does. I don't see a situation anywhere that makes sense to charge per hour. I just think you're literally shooting yourself in the foot by doing it. You tell me if I'm wrong with the comments. I mean, what do I know? You know, what do I know, people?